being being someone who's been through as many errors as you have been and uh you were talking about you know uh your last record being to, uh, a record that you wh when did um hips don't lie come out again how old is that um hips don't lie came out 2006 right yeah 2006 so you you have cuz before that you were doing you have records that have hit the 20 year mark you have those classic albums and yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. we're coming up on biggie and pox you know what i mean they they got anniversaries coming up and you were around for that era you were actually there and saw it and breathed it in and what is what is some of your thoughts when you see a mild trend of some of the youth going at the legends and discrediting and well first of all man it's it's um because you work with 20 some year you work with the new millennials and et cetera, yeah, et cetera. yeah definitely but we opened up for biggie smalls the fujis oh that's deep yeah i mean we was driving you know what i'm saying i remember being in the dressing room and puffy coming in the dressing room you know what i'm saying puffy will tell you that the only competition live was the Fuji's. <laughs> That's right? what's up. So, and then I remember being with Pac in Europe. Have I mean having that conversation, right? But dig. The reality of this is this: Tupac and Biggie Smalls, they passed away, right? Once again, dudes might be like, yo, Clef is going to put his foot in his mouth again. That's what he... Man, listen, I'm a general. I'm going to tell you all the truth because the kids got to know. Pac and Biggie passed away because of the entourage. Okay. The first okay. thing is this. Everyone who's watching this, you part of a hip-hop structure and all of that. You showing up with 100 niggas. Make sure you control your entourage. Don't you see me? I move by myself. If I move with through three dudes, trust me. Because the number one respect is the entourage. So nine times out of ten, most people that pass away, right? Even on the block, the agitator, he always the last to die. It's like the innocent person who's doing nothing, who's just going to the Chinese stores. Booyah. And the agitator takes off. It's so important that I said that. We lost two great people because of the entourage. Icons. Like insane icons. So I wanted to say that first. Second thing is this. What's going on with the millennials and our generation? It's a two-way gap. It's a disconnect, mm -hmm. right? Are we reaching out to them? Are we really teaching them the history that you're speaking of? Mm -hmm. Or do you expect them to know it by grant? Just to know it because we know it. If I don't tell my daughter who's 11 years old who Tupac is, as she's coming up, who Biggie is, and explain to her who those people are, they never going to understand fully who that is. So I think what happens is sometimes the millennials get taunted because we expect them to know this information. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of them know it, and a lot of them really don't know it. Mm -hmm. Facts. Like, Thugger got a brother that raps. I heard the dude, his focus is he loves Nas, he loves that kind of energy, right? Mm -hmm. So you got a dude who's gonna, like there's some like 19 year old dudes, yo, who's your favorite rapper? Big L. Because mm -hmm. they search within the culture. So I think that this, there's a weird connection gap. And the gap is sometimes I see a legend going at a millennial. You know what I'm saying? Like I be watching the back and forth sometimes. It's like, yo, you should know these lyrics, right? So I think that to connect that generation gap, it's important that the only way you're going to connect the gap is... Look, this is history, and you're going to be part of this culture. You have to learn that history. It's the same way, like, so me, if I tell you about the history, then I leave, and then you're like, fuck the history. I don't want to know. Now we got a problem. Mm -hmm. So until I tell you, so I feel like there's a, a disconnect gap because those kids that I run across, like Joey Badass, or showing up at a Joey show, 
and the millennials with the backpack or going to South by, you still got kids that are culturally want to be part of that 90s thing that fully understand that. But then you got kids that feel like this is their era. This is their generation. They have their own sound. And they're like, man, remember when we was coming up? I remember, man, doing certain dances like the Cabbage Fact and other things. And uh -huh. older folks was like, what's the hell? What the hell that boy done do? And then they say, and I remember they said, man, that ain't music, man. Y'all robbing our music. Our music come from the 70s. Y'all just taking all that 70s music and repeating it, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a generation gap. But I feel a lot of it is up to us to close it, you know? I I agree with you. Fire off. Debate starts. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. There's one thing that I always add in. Whenever, whenever I used to have, um, whenever I would have this discussion with classic artist or a veteran or somebody of high stature and they would say to me you know that that same i remember when our parents used to look down at us and say that's not music you're not making real music mm -hmm. i completely get that however the difference is the generation that's here now uh 30 and up talking to the generation 30 and down the difference is our parents weren't listening to hip-hop those those 30 plus their parents who are now 70s 80s they weren't listening to hip hop music they were listening to R&B they were listening to Motown they were listening to Cool and the Gang they were listening to Sugar they weren't listening to hip hop we come from the era of Biggie Boot Camp Nas the Fugees Wu-Tang we were listening to hip hop so when we go back and critique the millennials now when we say listen you're it's whack which I don't think we should just say it's whack and leave it there. I think some explanation should be given. I like to tell people, well, from what I'm listening to, you guys have regressed. You've actually gone backwards. We were doing this already. This already happened. The music was moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. And what you think you're doing is new, but I've actually heard this already, which is the main reason I'm disappointed because I'm looking for the next thing and you guys have kind of moonwalked us backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... so if if I may, as a young Haitian lawyer, have a rebuttal to this, right? So everything that you named is purely East Coast. How so? And you told me Wu Tang. You just oh, said, as far as as far as the records I named off my era. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, cool. Yes. Well, I didn't include Snoop, but okay, yeah. you can if you want. Go ahead. I'm well, gonna yeah, wait. I, I definitely. I mean, Snoop got love from me. Dove Shack got love from me. Oh. Souls of Mischief got yeah. love from me. That's right. Hieroglyphics. The whole crew. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right. Don't Del. don't leave out don't leave out uh, Scarface who the Ghetto Boys in general yes. um, NWA I was a big fan of yes so what happens though this is the most important thing that I want you to understand and this is going to be bad news for you yikes we're dated okay this is important to understand that the the eleven year old the twelve year old is in. We're basically on our way out. This is so important to understand that. As we check out, our job is to give them as much information as we can. So sometimes I have that frustration, same frustration that you do too. But I feel that I'm like, holy shit, we got to give them more data and find a way like versus coming at them and saying man you should have remembered this because they they listening to us like we're a broken record and it's almost like when you get dated you don't know you dated because you are saying the same stories like you be, you know like the my uncle he like yo man you know when i was you know what time man people are putting up their fingers and typing in the air dog i don't know Yo, when I was watching Star Trek, yeah, you was watching Star Trek. We live in Star Trek. So I just feel that with these kids that sometimes that frustration that we're getting, at times we just got to take a step back and say, whoa, 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 hold on. Because my daughter, you know, if you have kids or your nephews and every generation, no matter what happens, long after we gone, you write there's n everything reinvents itself under the sun. Okay. Right? I'll show you something, man. I did a record called Hendrix. I labeled it Acoustic Trap. And I remember when I put the record out, no offense, 
But your gener, our generation, ah, Clef trying to do trap music now. He done do trap. Clef is out of his mind. We need to hear some classic boom bap. This was Clef no. But in my brain, right, it's exactly what you said. The songs never changed to me. Like, who gonna outbar Jay Z on a record? Not nobody from this millennium. It's almost like we cheating when we rapping with the kids. It's almost like we're cheating, right? But they have something. What they do is this generation moves off of Sonics. Mm -hmm. So their Sonic pulls them. So my daughter, for her to react to a record, it's a Sonic. It's almost like, you know how we have our sound and our sound was boom bap. I don't care where you at. The minute boom bap come on, we all turn to woodpeckers. We're like this. I don't care what was going on. Woodpeckers. Right? They generation... Every time something go on, they just like this. They so now it went from the woodpecker to them basically pulling the entire wall down. So me, I study vibration. So I said, well, what happens if I just do a record against an acoustic guitar, right? And of course, when I'm going jacking a buck and a buck and a top it about I'm be a trouble top electricity can give you a shot. They never heard that from me. They thought me ghost invented the flow, right? They never heard DOS effects. They don't know what that is, right? So now what happens is. When they show up, and I'm freestyling at my show, and I'm like, oh, y'all thought this was Migos. Let me show y'all where it started. Then I play. Y'all want effects? Some dot. And the kids is like, what is this stuff? Mm -hmm. So I think that it all crosses generation. And I think our job is, because sometimes we be so upset and we so frustrated that we missing out on what's going on right now. And you have a generation right now that's no joke. They rebellious. Like, can you imagine like they like, yo, we not going to vote because they took Bernie Sanders out and they go to the ballot and they write a, a gorilla's name. This is the kind of generation like you got a group of kids who has everything in the, in the tip of their fingers. Mm -hmm. So I just say that to say at the end of the day, I do share like frustrations. Right. But my frustration is just like, holy crap. If we don't do something and don't give more information, they all get lost within a information. It's almost like I see Drake. Drake picks me up. I remember when I had Yale Haiti and was doing said, yo, anything you need, boom, boom, boom. The carnival, man. Kanye West. We said when I saw Kanye, 25 minutes of the carnival. 25 minutes of gone to November. Right? Now these kids are young, right? But they got that information. And they become the kids of this generation. When you hear Drake one dance, singing, rhyming, doing all of that, mm -hmm. I'm not going like, yo, man, I did that in 1997 on an album called The Carnival, right? Because they're not paying attention to that. But now when I'm at my show and I flip Hips Don't Lie and I just mix one dance rhythm with it, mm -hmm. then they go, oh, that's what's going on. So I think... And then this is the last thing I'm going to say on this topic. When the kids, when you're doing a record with the kids and they come to get you, whether if it's Young Thug, whether if it's your guy, all them kids, they come in to get you because they're a fan of yours. And always remember legends, icons. You never have to change your style because they come in to get you because they grew up on you. On what you did. On what you did. So, but I promise you, the way they're going to flip them drums is just going to register to their generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why, I, you know, it's a long time to be like, trust me, we be having this conversation at the dinner table, especially with them. And then they be going ham. Like, be like yo, y'all got to respect Biggie. Y'all got to respect Tupac. Uh, you know? I'm, I'm never frustrated. I'm more, I'm more, my thing is more, I have my generation that I came up in, proud of it. I have my standards. I don't like dropping my standards. I feel like if I've been eating at a tavern on the green my whole life, you're not going to convince me that McDonald's is lit just because it's everywhere and a lot of people like it. My standards are up. My standards don't come down. That's the whole point of having a standard. It's supposed to exist in spite of the times, not switch with them. So my standards are where they are. Um, as far as the generational divide, I'm never frustrated. I'm always more curious as to how it happened. Um, it, it's never a matter of you need to, you need to, you need to. I'm never on that note, but I'm always trying to figure out like, well, 
how where where did we go wrong where you missed this because i had older brothers who put me on to rakim ll cool g rap etc cetera, etc cetera. um and i wanted to know because i felt like if i was going to be in hip-hop i should know this stuff well i'll tell you as a haitian lawyer again where did we go wrong we this is important to know this part i am all here right? as an american client yes so this is the this is so important right where did we go wrong you just said standards and by the way like <laughs> this is probably going to be the most watched video online right so look you, sweet you said standards hey, right you said standards right now keep in mind your standards and my standards is going to always be here but now what happens is when I'm watching the kids, right, real time, because, you know, I be playing all over the world, mm -hmm. wherever. And then when I show up and whether I'm going to DJ or play music, it's the millennials. So the pulse of what's going on. And I put on these records and they react. You see, when we was coming up, the Twin Towers were up. OK. When we were coming up, the idea of of people like just randomly bombing stuff up or doing different things. None of that stuff really, we thought it was in different countries because when we was watching it from the TV, are you aware that when these kids are listening to music, nine times out of 10, it's not like they don't know every kind of music, but they have they go to escape music. Mm, okay. And it's sort of like, it's a different reality than how we were living. Because when we was coming up, we felt like we couldn't be touched. Like at the end of the day, we had our music. Even certain rappers that was talking that conscious stuff, they would go eat pork afterwards. You know what I mean? Because it was good to do, right? But what happens is these kids have an honest opinion to say, you know what? I'm watching this. They're like, man, when we get to the club, we want to escape this reality. Okay. Because when you look at the news and you sit back there and you watch the information, it's almost like our this generation the way that they control it is from a level of fear. And the way that the kids escape, unfortunately, is through their drug and through their music. That's not so different from what I remember. Like when weed was blowing up, Method Man and Red Man were all over the place. Snoop was doing his thing. And I remember cutting on a couple of tracks just to kind of blank out whatever else was happening. But we had the Twin Towers. The idea of terror was not that close to us. You know, the the what we what these kids are witnessing, we haven't witnessed this. I mean, just just imagine for a second, a kid is eight years old. They open up the TV and they turn around and go, Daddy, why did this person roll up in this school in this kindergarten school and just shot all of these kindergartners okay. up? So it's almost like now you more find yourself having to explain violence to a kid well for like well if they did that tomorrow they could come here real time so it's almost like yeah we had the meth yeah we had the reds but we all still felt safer like the hip-hop community no matter like it's almost like if the beef was breaking out the beef was us creating the beef like Amongst this block with that us. block yeah Between you know we us. harlem we're brooklyn we jersey but with this it's almost like the kids are fighting ghosts like they can't see. And a lot of times that fear factor, man, it's like if this was back then when I was sending my daughter to school and she was getting on the bus, I'm comfortable. When she gets to the school, I'm comfortable, but not now, though. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, is she okay? What's going on? It's almost like I feel like, yeah, we've been through some stuff, but I also think like once again, it's a yin and yang situation. That's, that's just how I feel. Especially when you think about how violent those times were, the 90s, early 2000s. Like, we actually, rappers put hands on each other. It really wasn't about tweeting from behind a computer. You you might get caught. Somebody might actually manhandle you. Yeah, I mean, it's real. That's why I was telling you, we don't really take that emotional when it comes to somebody. Like I said, if a tweet goes up, you don't like it. We'll keep, you know, if you have beef, this is my gym. I box in this gym five days a week. Bring your gloves. We could, we could deal with it. But I just feel that our beef was amongst us. It's almost like we created the beef amongst us. This generation, they beef in this whole fear factor is really how the media stages it. And they only form of escape 
is in the music or in the sports. That's the only time they get away. Other than that, they're back to, they can't even watch the news. Mm -hmm. Just my thoughts. It would explain why the drug use is so uh, early and rampant. And well, every generation has a drug. Right. These, this generation seems to have all of them. Like whatever they can, whatever yeah. they can pull in. Is yes. But once again, this generation has the information. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. Like we didn't know, like back then, we didn't know if we took cough syrup. I don't care who it was, because if if certain people knew that, they would have figured they it out. Got it popping. Like right. so, this generation once again, it's a now information. Literally anything they want, they go online and be like, yo. If you mix this with this, so it's almost like it's dangerous because dudes, kids today, they messing with the pharmaceutical. Like, you know, we might take an L or an edible. I mean, they're doing liquid Haran. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing is not to tell you to put the, the cup away because once I tell you that, you're like, oh, Father Clef, man, I, well, I'm to you. I mean, just catch a vibe and y'all tell me put the cup away. But my thing is, at the end of the day, you look at Pimpsy or different things, right? Everything happens in moderations. And with anything in life, if you overdo it, you're going to die. That's all I could tell you. Mm -hmm.